yeah, so uh, as Mark said, I'm currently employed, which is quite nice. Um, I do iPhone development for a new startup company called Coolio Limited. Um, they specialize in mobile application development, um, although they seem to have a knack for finding other things for me to do. So as well as iPhone development, they've got me doing a bit of graph databases, they've got me doing Mac development, they've even got me looking at silly little algorithms that we can potentially put into our main product, um, which will hopefully be coming out sometime in December. So fingers crossed for that one. Um, what I, the, the way I kind of summarize my job is I tinker. I, I tinker away with ideas. So my boss will come to me and he'll say, okay, um, I've had a really great idea. You know, user interface is, you know, it's rubbish. We need to completely revamp the whole thing. And I'll say, okay, you know, I'll go ahead and do that. But usually what will happen <coughs> is we'll get to a point where halfway through the development, he'll just change his mind or everyone will change their mind and be like, oh, okay, you know, that's crap. Don't worry about that. We don't know what we were thinking. Um, and I can't tell you how many times I've actually felt like just banging my head against some large solid object because I've said to them a million times, this isn't going to work, guys. This, this isn't going to work. Just trust me on this one. Um, but there you go. There you go. It's one of the not so great perks of actually having an employer. Um, right. So um, things to sort of look forward to really are probably the biggest thing are the challenges, right? Because at, at the moment, you guys are all doing your dissertations, right? Yeah? Is that, is that right? No one? Yeah? Cool. Um, now, the great thing about dissertation is that you make, you make your own criteria, you know, you build up your own objectives, and you build it from scratch. And that's cool. And somewhere down the line, you'll suddenly realize, oh, okay, you know, I can improve this, or I can take this out and it will still be just as good as the, the original idea. When, you've, when you're working with someone else's idea, it's a lot more complicated because a lot of the time they don't really know what they want. Um, have any of you guys done placements yet? Or have you done placements? No? Internship. Internship. Yeah. Whereabouts? Uh, I work in my country. Oh, 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 you're, oh, you're a lot more impressive than my job. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, well, did, uh, have you guys ever done sort of freelance web design or anything like that? Yeah? yeah? Right, okay. Okay, so um, freelance web design, great fun. Did it. I did it for a couple of clients, never did it again because it was horrible. Um, yeah, yeah, great fun. Um, and the reason I didn't do it is I didn't really like the people that I was making these websites for, mainly because they just didn't have a clue what they were talking about. Um, they had no technical knowledge, they had no creative knowledge, they, they literally just had an idea and they were showing me websites like, oh, okay, I want a product to be just like this website or just like that website. And I was like, okay, you know, and quite often I'd just download the code and tweak that take it back to them and they're like, oh no, no, I, I, I didn't want that. I didn't want that. I was like, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same code. I've just changed the colors. Sorry, you know, on that one. Um, so yeah, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't great. But when I was doing all that work, it taught me a lot. You know, it taught me an awful lot about change management. And one of the things to or well, one of the things that I think is important to always bear in mind is it doesn't matter what you're making. You know, you could be making an A4 report on, I don't know, how to make a report or something crap like that. Or you could do a website, you could do software, um, you could do mobile applications, you could do anything you want as long as you get the architecture right. So you guys know about modularity, right? Like object-oriented stuff, I hope. Yeah? Cool, you should by now. Um, now, you, you'll, you hear it all the time about how, you know, okay, you develop this object and then you plug it in. And the great thing about modularity, you can take it out again and the rest of the system kind of still works. It might be a bit clunky every now and again, but it still works. If you don't get the architecture right, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that because um, you'll have like high coupling, low cohesion, all this kind of stuff. And the main problem you'll have is that 
your whole product, your whole project is centralized focused. It just it centralizes its focus on one particular thing. And if that thing breaks, the whole thing just crashes. It just goes completely wrong. Um, Mark has mentioned that I'm doing uh, a lot of OpenGL stuff. Uh, we're actually using a mobile specific version of OpenGL called OpenGL ES2. Um, and it's fun. It is fun, you know, we get to make a, a lot of cool effects. Um, we get to have things whizzing around the screen, um, like user interaction issues, all this kind of stuff. But the main problem we found is that it's not stable for an architecture that's driven by object orientation. Because you can have all this wonderful code, you know, and it can be brilliant, it can work absolutely fine. But we changed one line of code in our GL syntax and all the color went from every single object in, in the project. And we were like, you know, oh no, this can't happen. This really can't happen. Um, luckily, it took us about 10 minutes to figure out exactly what we'd done wrong. Um, which brings me on to the next point of, there aren't any limitations to what you guys can actually do. If you want to create a database out of Star Wars, then you can make a database out of Star Wars. If you want to make a flying car, it will take you a hell of a long time, but you could probably do it, you know? Um, and that's one, of the, that's one of the biggest things I've learned, you know, because when, when I first started this job, I mean, I, I've been doing this stuff for four months, right? Things have changed so much for me in four months. Um, as Mark mentioned, I had no iPhone experience whatsoever. Now, if my employer asks me to make something, I'm not really asking how can I do it? I'm more asking like, okay, how long is that gonna take? You know, and not if I can do it, when can I do it? And that's one of the things to bear in mind. So e even with things like your dissertations, some things might be really mundane and simple and they might take a while, you know, but you'll get there in the end. And that's, that's the absolutely beautiful thing. As long as you keep striving for that finish line, you'll get there. Believe me, you'll get there. Um, now, I was a little bit lucky to get the job um, because I knew Mark. Um, and I chose his Android development module because I was interested. It was actually the first module I chose throughout my uni life um, that had anything to do with IT. I did Italian in my, in my second stage, and that went horribly wrong. So I'm not doing that again. That's a hard language. Um, so yeah, did that, and then I remember actually it was the first or second session. You had um, he had an Android phone, and do you guys know about routing, like custom ROMs, that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's good fun. Isn't it? Yeah, Eastern Island, he's done it before, right? Um, well, Mark said, okay, you know, I've got about thirty of these that need routing. I still need to do the other twenty-nine actually. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll get I'll get around to that. Um, <laughs> and instantly, I, I just put my hand up. I don't even know why, because I'm I I quite happily just sit there and just watch someone talk. I won't listen to them. I'll just watch them talk. Um, and I think that was a really good thing for me to do, though, because it was out of my comfort zone. You know, it was like okay. I know a bit about this. Oh, well, <laughs> ah. yeah. um, well, you know, why would I? Sell yourself, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd had a bit of experience. You know, like I'd uh, routed my own phone and done custom rooms on that and, and that sort of thing. Um, and Mark happens to choose the most awkward phone ever. It was like every custom room that I put on there that either the Wi-Fi didn't work or the sound didn't work. And I couldn't work out why. I was like, what's going on? You know, what is going on? Um, and eventually, we realized that the, uh, the version of Android I was trying to put on the phones was a bit too high for <laughs> the actual phones themselves. Um, so we took that down a bit, and we managed to fix it. Um, and like I say, I need to, I owe you 29 rooted Android phones. So we'll, we'll, we'll get around to that at, at some stage, I'm sure. Um, but even that, 
you know, I didn't just step into it and exactly knew what I was doing. You know, it was really uncomfortable for me because also when you ruin a phone, you can brick it, you know, you can completely ruin it. Um, and I had no idea what I was talking about. So here I am, you know, I took the phone home, you know, and I was, I was just tinkering around with it. And then the next thing I know, um, it kind of got stuck on the load screen, which was a bit scary. Um, and I was like, oh no, okay, fine, that's not fun. Um, luckily, managed to fix that. I say luckily, it was just trial and error, basically. And we do like a bit of trial and error, because that's always good fun. Um, debug, greatest invention in the world. Um, and yeah, yeah, what, a few weeks later, something like that. Um, Yeah, and here I am, pretty much. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's it's already been like a massive experience. Um, you were talking a bit about the technical skills of the rest of the team. That might be quite interesting. Oh, well, like the other team members and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah can do. Um, there's a friend of mine called Sean Startin, um, and he actually did the course here. It was exactly the same course as me. Um, and the company were looking for someone to come in and develop um, what are called graph databases. Um, and I said, you know, Sean might be able to do it. He's never done it before, you know, but, you know, from what I've seen, he's usually quite impressive. Um, so, you know, he went, he went for the interview and all that, went really well. Um, he's now my boss. <laughs> <laughs> so that went really well. <laughs> Um, yeah, and uh, that actually brings up a really good point, a really good point that I do actually regret because they, they didn't just kind of say, okay, he's your boss, you suck. Um, they actually sat me down and told me why. And the biggest reason was that I made promises when I first began that I just didn't keep. And the only reason I did that was I was trying to impress them, basically. So rather than saying, you know, oh, well, I'm not sure how long it's going to take. I was like, one week, one week, anything, one week. I can do that. I can do it. Okay. I can do it. Um, and I, I, I really couldn't. Um, and it's only now, um, having gone through a kind of barrier and a change, that things have, things have actually become a lot easier. We're able to effectively and accurately um, measure our deadlines and say, okay, we don't know how long that's going to take, but we can get these things done first. And that's a big step forward. Um, so yeah, that's Sean. Um, there's Amy, who is the executive assistant. So she goes out and buys like office chairs and things. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's James and Paul, who are interesting characters. Um, they... Uh, are extremely clever and they they seem to work well together so James is one of those really really ridiculously cre creative people with not so good communication skills um, Paul on the other hand is the other end of that you know he's very methodical he's very procedural he likes things done uh, programmatically so between them they make a really good team Consequently, though, they do have a few arguments every now and again, and um, it can result in some issues. So we've, we've been told, okay, under no circumstances, talk to Paul about the user interface. Don't talk to him anymore, because uh, we, we were taking, we, um, we, we have to get um, a, stable, a stable build at the end of every week, and then we present that to James. And if James likes it, which he hardly ever does, um, then it will say, okay, you know, I like these points, but I hate all these points, pretty much. And then we have to go and work on those. Um, and we were finding that actually there were a lot more of those points that he didn't like uh, because of Paul, which was fun. Um, one of the great examples was um, we had to, uh, we had to put a, a kind of slider on the screen I can't go into too much detail, but basically we had to put a slider on the screen and there's a massive user interaction issue in that with a slider, certain objects don't like them because you get sensitivity issues. 
Um, and that brought about a whole massive problem of trying to convert a linear scale into a logarithmic one. And I did it, and then they told me, oh, guess what? We're changing it. So that was, that was good fun. Hello. I think I'm doing better without the slides, to be honest. Yeah, you can carry on with it. Yeah. Uh, well, they're, they're a bit plain. They're a bit plain, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to talk about NDAs and stuff. I'm not sure these guys are familiar NDAs, with NDAs, yeah. Um, right, are you guys familiar with intellectual property and all the legal kind of doodad in projects, yeah? Um, there's something called an NDA, which you guys might be familiar with. It basically means that you can talk about some parts of the project, but you can't give the idea away. So if you guys ask me, okay, what are you working on right now? I could say, well, okay, you know, we're, we're working on a mobile application. But I can't go, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't oh, go. When, when this finished, I'll get you back after Christmas when it's released. Yeah, yeah. Talk to the project. Yeah, great bit of marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you probably will actually. Um, and yeah, so you sign a, an NDA, um, more so with smaller companies. Uh, the larger ones, they'll have it in your contract somewhere, which is usually about 25 pages long. Uh, my contract was about four pages long, um, and one of them was a salary page, which is all right. Um, but consequently, it means that when my family or uh, my girlfriend asks me, okay, what are you doing right now? Go on. And they, they keep poking and poking. Um, it's that whole legal thing of basically that like, I can't tell you because otherwise I lose my job and then I don't get paid. Um, and it's actually quite a scary thought to be honest because that's the only source of income I have. I don't do anything else. Well, I have like a social life and stuff, but like, I mean professionally, professionally I don't do anything else. Um, which means that if I don't do my job, it's not like a larger company where someone will step in for me if I don't do my job, the work just doesn't get done. It's as simple as that. Um, even Sean, who I work with, who is involved in the main user interface, he has an idea of how it works, but you guys will know that if you're familiar with your own code and how it's structured, you'll be able to find and track down errors a lot faster than someone new to it, right? Um, and that's, that's always one of the sort of more interesting things of how, how do you balance things in a, in a proper team where you're not all huddled around one computer and there's like 10 of you. Um, and we, we use uh, things like Git. You guys heard of Git? Yeah. Um, it's in, in, in the briefest terms, it's a way of sharing a project between several different workstations. Um, and you can all work on it at the same time, but then you have things called branches. And what you're able to do with these branches is say, well, okay, that's your branch, that's my branch. You work on you know, those features, you work on that. Now, if anything goes wrong in one of these branches, that's fine. You, know, you can re uh, revert the changes. And then eventually, you just bring those changes together to, um, to get, well, your stable build, which we present at the end of the week. Um, and now I've got to look at my slides because I can't remember what I was going to talk about. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, I've got a really boring slide about what I actually do. Um, so I'll, I'll walk you through it because it's a bit more technical than what I've been a actually been saying. Okay, so um, yeah. This is going well, isn't it? All right, so uh, the f first point is that I design and develop user interfaces. Um, I've taken that out of just developing mobile applications because to me, a user interface is much more than just a bit of the project. It's the thing that people see. You know, It's that thing that the users are going to interact with. And if we don't get that right, then users aren't going to, they're, they're not going to use it. Basically, we won't have any users. Now, that is especially important for us because we're completely funded by investment at the moment. So, like I said, we're working on our main product at the moment. It's getting released in December. But until then, we're relying on investment. 
Now, if we don't have a user interface that's worthy of the investor's money, um, we don't we don't get paid basically, you know, and we could lose it all. Um, Recently, there was some new competition that popped onto the scene, and uh, James and Paul, who are pretty much the gods of the company, um, said, okay, we might be shutting down. Um, and that was a scary time. That was really scary, because um, it meant that me, with a 2-2 classification and three months work experience, um, would need to go and find a job. And that's pretty hard. That's, yeah, that's really hard actually. Um, and I only know that because I went for a bunch of interviews um, before I went all the way up to Bradford um, and climbed a hill in the rain in a suit. And that was fun. That was really good fun. Um, but then I went all the way down south as well, you know. And it was weird because the, the one thing that both of them <coughs> said was that I didn't have enough technical knowledge. And I thought, what are you talking about? I've just spent four years of my life on a degree, or three and a half at that point, you know, three and a half years of life on a degree. What was the point, you know? And I now know what they meant. It wasn't the fact that I didn't have the technical knowledge, I just wasn't communicating properly. I wasn't getting my ideas across. I was just saying, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm confident. I'll come in and, you know, do a jive for you. Um, and it was just utter crap. And they saw straight through it. Um, now, at the time, I thought I was doing all right, to be honest. I thought, you know, made a good impression. Might have made a friend here and there. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. Um, and yeah, I d that didn't go according to plan. But that taught, that still taught me a lot. Um, and it, it seems to be a recurring thing that it doesn't matter what happens, if it's good or bad, you, you kind of still learn something from it. So I mean that, I took away the fact that, okay, I might need to tone down on the waffle. Um, you can see it's going well, by the way. Um, yeah, tone down on the, on the waffle and just get straight to the point. You know, if they ask me, do I know Java? I'll say, ah, oh, I know bits and bobs. Um, and it's helped me a lot in this job, actually, because um, I was talking earlier about change management and user requirements and stuff like that. If you, at the same time, if you don't communicate properly and you don't ask questions, you're not really going to understand what they're trying to get out of you. And that's, that's kind of, it's kind of a tricky thing to get your head around because it's really easy to ask questions. Um, but all I put it down to is um, a primary school example I did years and years ago. And it was really simple. It was just a journalist thing. And we just had to ask the question, like we were given an event and we were told, okay, you have to answer the questions, who, what, where, when, why, and possibly how. And I pretty much live by that now because if you can adapt those questions to whatever it is you're looking at, generally you'll find the answers that you're looking for. Um, so let's move on. Okay, so uh, as you guys already know, I develop uh, mobile applications. Recently though, um, I've started Mac applications um, as a kind of second project. So I had an idea, um, took it to Paul, my first boss and said, you know, I've got a really great idea, you know, in-house, um, it will really drive our software development, it will increase our efficiency, you know, and it was like, well, okay, you know, explain it a bit more to me, you know, a bit more, and I just said, you know what, give me a week, I'll come up with uh, a proof of concept, which is just the initial working idea, and if you like the idea, then I'll scrap that, start from scratch, and build something that's actually working. Um, and he really liked it, actually he really liked it. He liked it so much that he kept throwing ideas at me, and I, ha I actually had to tell him to slow down. And that was something that I wouldn't have been able to do months and months ago. I'd have been like, yeah, don't worry about it, yeah, I can do that, I can, I can re oh yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, and now, I'm like, well, okay, I'll put that on my list, but 
I can't just jump in. I'm not Superman, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, uh, the other thing is creating design documentation and test plans, which I'm sure you're all familiar with in some way or another. So I'm not going to go into that too much. Um, or at all, actually. Uh, I do something called time and change management. Um, so the time part of that is basically we get given a list of tasks for the week. I then break down those tasks and allocate a certain time to each one. Now that time is only based on research. So can we find something to meet our needs? We usually spend about 10 or 15 minutes on that uh, before we get really bored. <coughs> it's so boring. Um, so the next part of that is to just create something from scratch. Um, and that kind of comes into change management. So I keep banging on about this, but it's so important. If you, if we develop, if we're developing something, before we even touch a piece of code, we sit down and we think, right, okay, what can go wrong? Not how are we going to design it. What can go wrong with this? And we break it down and we try and think of all the possible things that can go down. Then we actually start developing and uncover some more issues that you know we couldn't have foreseen in the future and all that. Um, thank you, 340, that's a good, good module. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much how we develop. So the other, the other part of that is workflow and procedure. So workflow uh, goes hand in hand with time. So if you've got good time management, your workflow should be a lot smoother. Um, it's amazing how much paperwork there is. <laughs> wow. Um, I've always been quite lazy when it comes to paperwork. I'm not going to lie. I hate it. I absolutely hate it because it slows down your development time. So all the time you're doing paperwork, you can't get a product finished because you're doing that. Fortunately, it seems to work quite well. Because we're working in a pair and we'll get more team members in, um, that'll all get filtered down and eventually all I'll do is paperwork, which is, is uh, yeah, something to look forward to, I suppose. Um, but it does mean also that when the other team members come in, I'll have a bigger idea, so therefore I'll be able to tell them what to do, pretty much which is pretty cool. Um, now, the only reason for that is if someone new comes in and they don't really know the code, it would be my job to walk them through it and say, well, okay, you know, we've structured it this way, this is why, because a lot of things won't make sense at first, um, which brings in procedure management. Um, now, procedure is literally just the nuts and bolts of the kind of business side of things, if you like. So. Yes, we have to organize our time, but how do we do that? So, uh, do we fill out a timesheet? Do we have a database? Do we have a spreadsheet? Do we have a fancy website? Um, you know, the, the choices are absolutely endless. So if I had to kind of sum all that up um, into one just really short sentence, it would be that I actually design and create solutions to problems. It's as simple as that in a kind of broader spectrum of things.